morning? morning. Our processional hymn this morning is number 718, God of Our Fathers. Please stand. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not, we pray, leave us comfortless, but send to us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen, O Judge of the nations. We remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for their liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rent, we may not remember, we may not forget them until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. And this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony. And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, excuse me, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe in the God Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 97, and we will say it together. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. 
The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded by all who worship carved images and delight in false gods, bow down before him, all you gods. Cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgment, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. A reading from the Revelation of John. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, and they, are, they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say come, and let everyone who hears say come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let e e every, anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things said, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus will be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our sequence hymn is number 680. We will sing verses 1 through 3 and 5. Please stand.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you love me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord be with you. Almighty God, open our hearts to see your presence in our own personal lives. Help us to see that you are here with us on this earth. And help us, Lord, also to see what it is that we must do to share your presence and your grace with others so that all may come to see that you are here and that God is here with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I forgot to announce that my name is Everett Walk, at least I think that's what it is. And uh, I, you remember me, I guess, but <laughs> I've been here for a while and I'm just, uh, uh, Joyce is on vacation and uh, here to, 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 to be with you. Last Tuesday, at a Bible study where all the deanery, uh, the Episcopal priests of the deanery meet, a, a lot of them, uh, we were sitting in a discussion where we were all sharing our thoughts about preaching for the upcoming Sunday, particularly today, following the return of Jesus to God at the Ascension last Thursday. And in the midst of that discussion, I became aware of something I had never seen before in 45 years, and it moved me deeply. And here's what it was. What I saw was this, that last Thursday, the ascension, last Thursday, God, Jesus, in human form, did what? Return to heaven. Bye-bye, God. In fact, Luke records people waving goodbye to God as, God as Jesus returns to heaven. That was last Thursday. That's what we celebrate, the Ascension. Next to Sunday is Pentecost. is Pentecost. That's what we celebrate next Sunday. So what are we doing today? We are going to celebrate the in-between Sunday, <laughs> which I have never thought about until Tuesday. That this is a chance maybe to talk about what it means for you and for me to be the ones who in the future of God's presence have a lot to do with it. Which is what we're going to talk about. It's incredible. Ascension Day is when we celebrate the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to God. Jesus goes home. And as I mentioned, Luke mentions that the Ascension 
was about looking up and saying goodbye. Jesus is no longer here. You may not like to hear that, but read the Bible. But the question is, and I'm sure it was in their hearts and minds, is God gone for good? So the question then becomes, what's next? Is the incarnation, God in human flesh, finished now that Jesus is gone? While they could not see it right then and there, they would be entering what I call a moment and a time of introspection, of looking inward, a time of waiting, a time of asking questions about their personal relationship with God and what that means, which is what we're going to do. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would come upon them. And John, in his gospel, actually tells of the Holy Spirit being given in the upper room just before Jesus died. So the Holy Spirit, God's presence, is very real in your life. But it's very, very true that the ascension is still very real. The ascension puts God's presence in human flesh, which was Jesus, into the question of how, now that Jesus is gone. How does the presence of God get into the world out there now that the one who was sent to do it ain't here? Pentecost, next Sunday, we celebrate God sending his presence into our flesh. And what do you think that means? There is a new Jesus. Think about it! There's a new Jesus. And it's you and me. God's presence is now sent to our flesh in the form of the Holy Spirit. So, yes, Christ is risen. But now in your heart and in your mind, reincarnated in human flesh. So, I want to use this moment in time where we are today to ponder the question, what's next when it comes to God being real in the world and in personal lives? And what role do we play in the reincarnation of God today? And I would like to use this Sunday to recognize the space between last Thursday, the Ascension, and next Sunday, the um, Pentecost, which causes us to ask ourselves the very same hard question. Who am I? Who are you? Where are we? Who are we? And does the unknowable God that Jesus revealed really care? And further, if we are to be agents of grace, now and in this time, what does God expect of us? Are we ready to be the continued reincarnation of God's presence in the world, which the Holy Spirit calls us to be? You've got to think of this. This is serious stuff. It's wonderful, because it has to do with the presence of grace. So let me offer here a prayer from a person by the name of Alastair McLean who wrote a book on uh, uh, Celtic prayers. Excellent spiritual writer. And here it is. I read this to the Bible study, so, and I saw their reaction. I want to see what yours is, so. Here it is. Seven times a day, as I work upon this hungry farm, I say to you, Lord, Lord, why am I here? What is there here to stir my gifts to growth? What great thing can I do for other people, I who am captive to this dreary toil? And seven times a day you answer me, I cannot do without you. Once did my son live your life, and by his faithfulness did show my mind, my kindness, and my truth. But now, he has come to my side, and you must take his place. So here we are. 
This Sunday is what I call the in-between Sunday between Ascension and Pentecost, and it's about waiting and wondering, about paying attention to the fact that God has more need of us than just following Jesus, who has now returned home. It's like sitting in a car before we leave for vacation, putting directions in our phone. But all we have to really do to get going is to allow ourselves to be filled with the fuel that will push us forward. The question before us then, as we wait, how do I as a human being and us as a team who gather every Sunday reincarnate the presence of God in the Holy Spirit? How do we live this out? How do we give flesh to the grace God bestowed upon us in real today time solutions? Just like Jesus did, who has gone home. So let me offer you this. It's, a mem it's Memorial Day tomorrow. The day we remember and give thanks for the lives of people who gave their lives to others, who made that choice for which many of them died. We give thanks for all they did. But the point for you and me today is how do we, like them, give our lives over to being the grace of God that Jesus made real. When it comes to God's grace, God's grace becoming real in the world, which is what Jesus was sent here to do, and how we are called to do, we need to ask ourselves a very serious question. And this is it. What is the center of your life? What is the hub around which your life revolves? Is it me and my needs? Or is it God and Jesus' continued presence? Is it my ego needs? or the call to reveal the grace of God, we have come to know in a very real way. How do I make space inside to intentionally be present for God's grace to act through the way I act? You and me and us together are called to reveal God's presence because God's presence in the Holy Spirit dwells now in our human flesh. It's a wonderful gift and a wonderful challenge so let me just throw this out. We live in a very squeamish time right now. And I do not think it's going to end anytime soon. That's just my thinking. But it's a time of hatred, dissent, disgust, rugged individualism, people killing four-year-olds because they, the killers, are lost. And I'll bet there are people who are more hungry for grace right now than they could ever be aware of. In fact, I know that's true because I've heard people talk to me about it. People who don't even believe in God. So the question for us is, how do we do this? How do we offer to others the reconciling grace God shows to us in the person of Jesus? Well, let me answer that. When you and I are confronted with someone who doesn't like us or doesn't like the way we do things and is willing to tell us so in no uncertain words, what will that person respond, this is key, when, what will that person see when we respond back to the people who are being aggressive towards us? What will they see as we respond to their aggression towards us? Competition, willing, winning is part of human life. But is competition all there is? Is that all we are? Is that what it means to be a human being living with other human beings? We are here today, right now, the, with, filled with the Holy Spirit, God's grace within all of us. Whether you believe in God or not, the Holy Spirit is still there. The question then becomes, and here's the hard part, what drives my actions in responding 
because actions are what people read. Grace becomes real when people see it. Grace becomes real when people see it in the midst, in the midst of empty turmoil, when they see it in the way we act, when they see it in the fact that we don't respond back to them the way they're responding to us. And so I ask each of us here, as we consider the tremendous gift of the Holy Spirit and the call to make it central to our lives, as Jesus did to himself, do people see you, do people see me, act in a my way or the highway way, or do they see the grace of God that I and you and us together have received? The grace we live out of because we have received it from God who desires to be present in the world right now, today, through the ways we act. I fully believe that this is what the disciples had to deal with when they were waiting for God's presence to again be real in their lives and their world. Folks, we do not have to respond to other people in a normal way. We have the way of grace. And I've taught a whole course on this, but one way to do it was with somebody, then I'll, I hope I'm not getting too long, is that we back off from the person that's insulting us and our need to react to them in a certain way and ask, do I really need to do that? knowing that the grace of God is with me. Because if God treated me the way that person is treating me, I'd be not here. But God didn't. Grace is about making a choice to allow a person to be a person even though you don't like it. Which is hard to do. God is the same. God is in the same human flesh that Jesus was. The difference now is that that flesh is still humans and it happens to be yours and mine as well as every person who has ever been alive even if that person is competing against us. It's a big deal but we have the gift of grace to live it out and make a difference in a world that is hurting. So let me repeat seven times a day as I work upon this hungry farm, I say to you, Lord, why am I here? What is there here to stir my gifts of growth? What great thing can I do for others, I who am captive to this dreary toil? And seven times a day you answer, I cannot do without you, us. Once did my son live your life, and by his faithfulness he did show my mind, my kindness, and my truth. But now he has come to my side, and you, 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 us, must take his place. Luke 24, 49 says this, we are clothed with power from on high. And so, as we reflect on this, we wait and open our hearts to God. We listen to an inner voice that we all have. God's presence with you and with me and with us is very real, very real. And it's up to us now. We are graced by God in order to share God's grace. I believe, therefore I do. Thank you, oh my God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand now and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now do the prayers of the people. In memory of our loved children, uh, do you want to do that now, Bill? Okay. In memory of our loved children who died in Texas, Bill has a song to sing, so you can sit for just a moment. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible. Lord Jesus Christ, we lift, that, lift up to you the parents of the 14 kids and the two teachers who were killed. We give you thanks for their lives. We know that they are grieving very deeply. We thank you also for the lives of the children and for the lives of all people that were involved in that situation. We know that you are with them Give them peace, grant them hope, and give them thanks. Through Christ we pray. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, 
for this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially remembering Morgan Williams, please add your petitions. That we find gun control in this country and save the lives of future children. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And let us stand and share the peace with one another. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. You take out your hymnal and turn to hymn 719, and we will be singing America the Beautiful.
367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we will also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. standing to kneel or to sit, whatever works for you. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, 
the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. We're going to ask that you come up and start at the end here and come around this way.
Our post-communion hymn can be found as an insert. God bless America. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Who's doing the announcements? Go, yeah, come on up. Good morning. Diane's gonna give us an update on the garden where it stands now. Well, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, Diane's going to give us a little update on the garden and where it stands now as we head toward completion. Okay. And I'm sorry I missed the, uh, the bishop, uh, Howell, when he came, but I did get to see it from Oban in Scotland where I got to the hotel just in time and hooked up to Wi-Fi and was able to watch the entire service and you know the dedication out in the garden. I was on my way to the Isle of Iona where they have an abbey and a nunnery. Uh, so I w got to watch the whole thing. It wasn't the same as being here, but it, it was good. Uh, we have a checklist of things to be completed. Uh, Pierce, the artist, the mosaic artist, is coming tomorrow. Uh, he's going to stain around uh, the two aisle parts that he's done and also around the altar. Then we have to remove the benches, restain the whole area, move the benches back on. And we're going to try to rearrange the benches. Uh, Mother Joyce said she wanted it to be a little bit more intimate than it is now, not so far away from where the altar is. I've also messaged the trophy shop. We have two dedication plaques, one for Reverend Virginia and another one for the chapel that are still outstanding. And of course, the cross. Uh, Connie, uh, I'm not sure she has an update on that. It's uh, in transit from Spain, and we'll get here someday. 
Yes, but that's where we stand, and I want to thank everybody who's been involved with the project. The Daughters of the King is uh, planning a quiet day uh, in the future, and we're going to make good use of our chapel and garden area. So I'll have more information on that uh, at a later date. Thank you. Last week, Joyce asked me to speak, but I was in the coffee hour doing my coffee hour duties, so I didn't get to say what I wanted to say. And if you remember the beautiful flowers that were on the altar, they were in honor of Mother Joyce leading us in this whole garden process. And for everyone, no matter whether it was your time, your talent, your treasure, to get the garden to where it is today. And I'm sure Pastor Ginny is looking down and saying, great job. Amen. Hey, thank you. Yes. Yes. People, people have really worked hard behind the scenes, and some of you will never know to what extent, but we are there to enjoy it, and it's there for everyone. Um, thank you, Father Reb, for being here in case you can play some other day. Also, I have a plea. Uh, we need a coffee maker on the, the 19th and the 26th of June. So I would love to have somebody step up. And if you need training, you'll get your training on the 12th of June. So please step forward. Somebody, somebody else needs to know how. And I don't want to uh, ask those who, have, who know how to do it unless it's in case of emergency. So somebody please step up and do that. So um, uh, Jean has created something wonderful for coffee hour. And please go over and help celebrate Memorial Day over there. Thank you. Thank you. Let us stand and sing together hymn 720, better known as the National Anthem. <laughs>